I'm Kate Shi, and um, I'm here to talk about what Design for Change is, and then um, also explain a little bit about what um, we are doing here in Taiwan and what are the exciting plans that are coming up. Okay, so first, let's just start with what Design for Change is. Okay, so Design for Change is the largest global movement that empowers students to be the proactive change agents in their community. So through undertaking these self-directed social change projects, children shift the mindset, mindsets from can I, can I really make a change to I can make a change. And in Taiwan, we do believe that anyone can be the solution to the problems, okay? So Design for Change is, uh, is established by, by Ms. Kiran Birasetti in India in 2009. And we're very proud to be a member of the entire global family in 2010, yay! So we're really old as a DFC global member, but then really young as of age, because the entire team is pretty young, okay? And then right now you're probably wondering, so how do we do design for change? It's easy. The methodology is just a four simple steps. Uh, I'm gonna show you right here. It's called feel, imagine, do, and share, okay? So the feel part is that children felt what bothered them and dig deeper to find out what really caused the problem. Uh, imagine. Think about the best case scenarios and brainstorm possible ways to solve the problems. Do, easy. They pick one idea, implement an action plan. Keep in mind that resources matter, budget matter, and time matters. Keep in mind all the users matters, and then share. Share your stories, whether it's successful or you failed. It's okay. Share your stories of change and inspire other people to get involved, join you guys, or do their own project of change. So it's easy, right? The four simple steps. And right now, I'm going to show you that how, how do we come up with the four steps? So Kiran Birasetti, she's a designer uh, by profession in the beginning. And she simply thought that, you know what? The design tool, it's called design thinking, that is very popular in the design world. Well, it should be, you know, uh, put into the use of educators because it's really, really what all the educators should be thinking about. Well, you know, first of all, when you, when you think about design thinking, you probably thought about these graphs and colored processes. But when it comes to um, definitions of design thinking, for us, you know, it's simply about um, a, a tool that designer uses and a process that designer uh, go through when they're trying to design with their users, trying to figure out what the users need and trying to figure out the best solution for the problems. So the very key here is to design with instead of design for your students or your parents or the uh, the um, other peoples that are involved in the situation. So design with, how do we design with? In education, there are many, many users, and somehow we're always designing with the parents and uh, we're, we're listening to the voices of teachers and the parents, but somehow we, uh, we don't always take into account of how the students feel, right? So it's very, very important that the users here in our scenarios are children. So how do we get um, children to involve? Usually, um, when, when we uh, think about problems in education, we look for solutions from the teachers, from the parents, instead of we asking the, tu uh, the students, how do you feel about the entire situation? Whenever there's a traffic jam in front of the schools, there's a very, uh, very dirty and smelly bathrooms, uh, the very heavy school bags, a very angry teacher. We rarely ask our children, so what would you want to do? How would you make a difference? So here, we thought using the four steps, we could guide the students, guide, the, guide them, and guide the children to make a change. And this is what we thought the four steps can bring, okay? So the first thing that we can bring is that we thought the children can learn how to be proactive during the process. So how do you be, um, whenever there's a problem, 
that occurred and children are given different tools or given knowledges that they have acquired during the, um, the sessions and the teachers have shared with them. But then um, you really hear that the children will, will hear that, uh, will share with you that, oh, so I want to know about, I want to know more about this and that. I want to know about, um, can you teach me this and that? And it's very, um, this is a very Taiwanese thing. The children usually felt that they're not that empowered and then all their knowledge are usually used to, sorry, <laughs> all the knowledge are used to uh, be applied in exams, during the exams. So that's because we don't have an opportunity for students to really um, apply what they have learned. And then usually when they realize there's a problem that they want to make a change about, they would want to learn more. So this is what we call proactive learning. And also during Design for Change, there's a very, very important need for teamwork. It's not about one man game. It's not about a certain person being the hero. It's about people, uh, the superheroes, the kids able to work with each other during an entire process. Also, the entire process, as you can see, is about solving problems. So uh, the problem solving skills will be cultivated, of course. And then the very, the, uh, this is a very important part for us that we are all, um, usually when we're all learning in the process in the classroom, we feel that we're isolated from the world. We are not part of the world. And then when we graduated, we're usually, you know, feeling that there's nothing we can do about what the world needs. And um, there are many, many problems that we're probably not good enough to change, to make a change. But then if as a student, we're able to be a part of the real world, then it would be really, really cool. It would be an opportunity for all of us to really blur the boundaries uh, of classrooms and real world and seeing that we can actually make a difference applying what we have learned in class. And the last two things, so that the students will realize that, hey, so I can actually make a change. So I'm a change maker and change can start with me. And also uh, th there is a mindset of shift from can I, can I make a difference to, hey, I can make a difference. So this is what um, we thought that Design for Change can bring to everybody. And also, we would like to share with you that what we have done. So, um, like we said before, um, we're the first few partners who joined Design for Change community, and we're launching DFC for, we have launched DFC for eight years right now. And this is what we have come up with. These three are the things that we're able to do in Taiwan. First, there is a DFC challenge. There is a challenge that's opened every year, and then we received uh, stories from students from all around Taiwan, and then we honor them. Also, there's uh, resources that we could give out, okay? So um, for teachers, facilitators, parents who wanted to bring their students and make a change, uh, if there's any, any kind of resources that they need, we're there for them. We're trying to translate and create local context, uh, contextualized materials for them. And finally, we have mentor support. So for the parents and the teachers, whoever wanted to make a difference, if they need any type of support, we're there for them, okay? And there are six um, things that we would like to share with you. Okay, so the first thing is we have received over 835 stories over the years. We have reached to almost 300 mentors around Taiwan. And there are 3,688 3, children that we have impacted who has enrolled in the DFC challenge. And then we've reached out to 500 something schools all around Taiwan. Also that um, we have delivered over 40 talks and workshops, reached out, well, over 50,000 people who attended all these talks and workshops. Finally, the event participants. We have uh, numerous events that we have held Either it's a Taiwanese, local, uh, ICANN Awards, or it's a um, global or international uh, events. So these are, uh, we have over 10,000 participants participated already. And we're very proud. And these are the, what we have accomplished in eight years. Finally, and most importantly, we would like to invite you 
to one of the most awesome events in the world. What is it? Okay, so Design for Change organized an annual global conference, or we call it global celebrations. It's called Be the Change. And we allow, we invite all the young superheroes from all around the world to show their stories, to share their stories of change, and inspire people from all around the world as well. So the event, it's called Be the Change Celebration. And this year, our theme is Together We Can. And last year, our Be the Change Celebration is held in Spain. Who will be coming on stage later on webinar to share with you their experience as well? And this year, the entire Be the Change Celebration is going to be in Taiwan. It's going to be held in, on December 1st and December 2nd. And you're very welcome to join us for the global celebration to celebrate the young superheroes who made a change in their neighborhood, in their communities, in their schools, in their families, in the world. So once again, I'm very, very happy to be representing Design for Change Taiwan, to be talking to you about Design for Change 100. And um, let's just see if there's anything, any questions that we should answer. Hi, hi, yay, yay, cool. So no questions so far. Just let us know if there's anything, and I believe there is a Design for Change uh, page on 100 communities. So just reach out to us if you have any questions, and hopefully someday that there is going to be a Design for Change in your country. And if there is already one, you have to do Design for Change. And hopefully we'll see you in Taiwan by the end of the year. And next, we'll welcome Design for Change Jordan, Shireen, and the young superhero, uh, Jaffa. Yay! So, bye, guys. Hello. Good morning from Jordan. It's 10.30 a.m. or past 10.30 a.m. I want to start by thanking Kate for the wonderful introduction to Design for Change. I am here with our superhero, Hi. Jafar. We are very happy to see you this morning. First of all, my name is Shirin Al Khudari. I'm an educator, a very passionate educator with 31 plus years of experience in teaching, teacher training, and in leadership. And I fell in love with Design for Change as a movement. Let me tell you first how Design for Change started. Design for Change started when a lovely colleague of mine knocked on the door of my office and she said, I came across this wonderful initiative for children. We shared it. Her name is Fanan Kilani. Thank you, Fanan. And we decided to adopt this initiative for all of Jordan, for all the beautiful children of Jordan. And so this is how our journey started with Design for Change. Design for Change was an initiative created by another wonderful, inspiring lady called Kiran Birsefi. Kiran wanted to respond to the three global goals set by the United Nations, which they advocate for all children to adopt so that we can live in a better world. These three global goals are, Jafar, can you help me? What are the three global goals? Well, they are the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, One is about think, poverty, yeah. eradicating. Yeah. yeah, about ending poverty in yes. the world by to, uh, 2030. And we have also about the um, climate Social, change. Climate change, preserving the climate mm -hmm. and respecting Earth. Yep. And Earth. what about social injustice? What should we do about that? We should have equality in our societies. And that helps us create a better world for our children and hopefully for ourselves if we live that long. So this, uh, Kiran came up with this very simple four-step initiative to realize that, to help children uh, be equipped with the skills they need to change their world for the better. And she called these steps FIDS. So they are feel a problem, imagine a solution, and then do it, act upon it, and then share it. And let's give you an example of that, how it works, uh, works with children. 
Let's suppose that in a school, there are children on the playground that have no friends. And none of the children seem to notice that. Some children are simply invis invisible on the playground. So you start an inquiry because you care as an educator. You start an inquiry not just about physics and math and chemistry and educational skills. You start an inquiry with children about empathy, compassion, and about good traits that make us good human beings every day. And so you motivate the children to go out there and notice such problems. And when they notice that there are lonely children on the playground, these children will get together and they will imagine a solution. And what happened in one of the schools I worked at, the children came up with an initiative called Be My Friend campaign. And they started looking for those children who had no friends and befriending them. And it became a competition of who was being kinder and nicer. And together, the whole environment of the school during playtime became friendlier and kinder. In this way, these children unwittingly helped reduce bullying on the playgrounds and make the environment of the school lovelier and a better place for everybody to be in. So basically, a four-year-old child can do that, and an 18-year-old child can do that. What happens in the... Um, regular curriculums, and I've worked with the best, and I am a firm believer of some of the best, and I'm a very strong advocate of some of the best that believe in action and children's action and relating uh, learning to real life. I feel that Design for Change complements that in very simple steps. It simply trains the children from the age of four, maybe three, up till 18 to problem solve daily to notice their environments and improve them daily. And by taking up these initiatives, learning becomes real. Learning becomes enjoyable. The children want to come to school and do good. As Kiran says, they shouldn't just do well. They should do good in the world. And this is how we equip them. And when, and when they feel that they can change and that they are superheroes, amazing things happen to their self-confidence amazing things happen to their personalities and that is what every parent wants when they used to come to me as a school principal they would ask about how does the school promote self-confidence how does it support character and design for change and educational programs that engage in real life learning real life real out there sustainable we don't do something just to graduate with a project or uh, to get a grade and then forget about it we do things that are long lasting that are sustainable out there in the society now um so a special thanks for kiran for inspiring us all yes we got the i can bug and we all uh, feel like superheroes helping these children become their own superheroes. Um, when it comes to the skills the children actually acquire, instead of preaching and telling you what happens, I'm going to ask Dear Jafar very soon. Just give me a minute, Jafar. Yeah, of yeah. course, take your time, Miss. Habibi. So, uh, to uh, show you what he did with the initiative and how far he went, uh, Jafar is one of many, many students who came up with initiatives and, and, uh, and uh, beautiful projects. But I have to admit that his idea transcended the school and his immediate environment, and it reached the share stage, the fourth stage where he was sharing across Jordan, and he will tell you all about it. I would like to thank 100 for giving us this opportunity to appear on their website. 100 is a believer of innovation in education. Uh, they have very uh, compatible views with, with Design for Change. Um, they do believe that children learn best when it is authentic, fun learning, and this is what we believe too. And I give the floor to Jafar. Hi, everybody. I'm very excited today to see you another time. Um, and hello, Kate and uh, Miss Nikita. Today, I'm very excited to share with you my experience with Design for Change 
that inspired me to establish my initiative, National Day. So, what is National Day? National Day is my idea where each company, institution, or a regular person like me and you chooses a day in the year in which will be considered as a national day. The company, institution, or the regular person will uh, choose, a, will dedicate a day that will help improve his society in. My vision is to help solve the problems as much as I can, which already are existing in our world, to provide the community a better and more developed uh, atmosphere so it develop and be a better place. Well, what makes National Day special or why National Day? At first, National Day solves a lot of problems in a lot of fields like educational, healthcare, environmental. Second thing, anybody can join National Day from companies to institutions or regular people like us. So that enhances the concept of community service in a better way in our societies. And third, National Day is continuous. So each company, institution, or a regular person, as before, um, can, uh, should make his community service each year on the same day. Um, for the question that, how much did it take me from time? Well, I was so lucky and hardworking at the same time. So it actually took me a few months to put my first steps on the long track. And um, I hope that National Day spread wider in my home Jordan and to be an international uh, if you, if you uh, like there is another innovation in our home Jordan I would like to share it with you it's called Yes Joe Young Entrepreneur Society of Jordan it is the biggest uh, child-like movement in our Arab world and it encourages us and like they help us improve our skills in a better way and I am very proud to be part of Yes Joe. While making national days for a lot of companies there is one point that shared them all, the feeling. Like you will feel happy when you see like how you affected on other people's lives and in your community. You didn't just stand for the problems. You had your turn in change. And I was so proud at that moment to be from the people who had their own like ID in the community. They had something that made them special, not like a number in the world. And um, I will thank uh, Ms. Shireen and Ms. Fanan for uh, bringing DFC to whom Jordan and Ms. Kiwan. Well, before I end, I would like to tell you about, um, like, let's say five important things and skills I learned during National Day. 
At first, I had more self-confidence after the National Day and the power of convincing with me like it also increased because when you want something from your heart of course you will do it you just need to have the reason to continue and my reason was i need to have my turn in my society and have the change the third thing is focusing on your target so you need to organize your plans to have a full initiative or a project and successful one. For the fourth, I mean, wait, it is fifth, yeah, I'm sorry. And it's the most important one is to believe that I can. Bravo. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. Here we have Miss Kate. Hello, Jaffa. Hello, and we are excited for the Taiwan. And of course, if you organize it, I'm sure that it will be a great thing. Can you invite the children of Jordan to post their stories, start initiatives, and post their stories on our website yeah. so that they can possibly take part in the Taiwan competition in December? Of course, and I invite all the children in Jordan and even in other countries to uh, have a DF, uh, their DFC project and their initiatives and like go spread it in Taiwan. Um, and I please, I want to ask you all not to compare us with Jafar. He by far outsmarts us all with his presentation skills, with his confidence. And this is what we want every child across the world to be equipped with. And of, again, thank you, Ms. Kiran Versiti for making this like wonderful initiative. And please step forward, everyone, and good luck, Miguel. Your Yay! Goodbye from Jordan. We hope you like had enjoyed and you learned things. We love you. We love you all. Thank you. And next, you will meet another very inspire, inspiring person, Miguel from Spain. Good, good luck. luck. Yay! Hello, my name is Miguel and I'm from DFC Spain. It's a great opportunity to be here. Thank you so much, Hundred, for this for this space in order to share with the world what we are doing. And for sure, it has been a great presentation from Kate, DFC Taiwan, and from Zreen and Jafar from DFC Jordan. So now all the pressure for me in order to try to transmit you uh, what is Design for Change in Spain. First of all, uh, I used to be an IT consultant and then a business consultant for 12 years. And in 2009, I gave myself the, the, the chance to reinvent myself. I began to study some or to have some training in coaching and design thinking and appreciative inquiry. And in 2010, I saw an, an amazing TED talk from Kiran Birsetti and this changed everything. Is why it's so important for me to be in front of you if, because if someone doesn't know Design for Change, it's a big responsibility. Uh, so from 2011, we began to develop Design for Change in Spain, uh, a group of people not related with education, but with the idea that we need to change something in the education because we see that it's not uh, giving us what we are looking for no? in, in this new society that we are facing. So from 2011, we began to understand the feed imagine do share that Kate uh, explained you in the first video in order to implement in Spain because every, every country is different and the framework, the framework is the same, but we need to do in the, in the, in the national context. 
So we invest two years in order to understand how this could work uh, in Spain. And then we realize that uh, this magical formula is, is great, no? Because it's, instead of adults telling children what to do, it's just ask them, how do you want to change the world? But really listening to them, because I think we are used to tell them what to do. And now children uh, are used that we, we just have, they just have to wait until someone tells them what to do. And this is a pity because we are losing so many opportunities to do amazing things. We have seen Jafar, and that for sure he's an amazing uh, boy. And we are having amazing stories all around the world just by listening to them. And it's just this magical formula from Kiran Birsetti. You know? uh, what we want is to empower children in order to, to tell them that they can change the world. But to change the world is just the, the, the way to empower them. And in Spain, we are very focused on educators because we know that if we want to empower uh, children, we need the people who are working with them in any context, in schools, in uh, non-formal education, everywhere where there is an adult with a student, I think it's a, it's a change of mind. No? It's, it's what we call the I can mindset. Uh, we are going to listen to them and to show, to see them not as the future, but as the present. And this is the key idea. Uh, because when you see the children as, oh yes, yeah, someday you will be able to do something, then we are not listening to them, really. And when we listen to them, it's very easy to know what and how can we uh, help them. And is why in a, in instead of direct their learning, so their life, what we do is to facilitate. And if we give the educators the tools in order to do this, everything is going to change. Because it's not something that you are going to do in a concrete project. It's the way you are going to interact with uh, children, but not only with children, with all people that are uh, around you. And is why this so simple formula that uh, Howard Garnett um, tells about uh, Kiran Bissetti that she has been able to, to do something so powerful um, as design thinking, so easy to adapt that children with three years old are able to, to do. No? And uh, when you do the tools to educators in order to empower their students, everything is going to change. And for example, in Spain, how are we doing this? First, we have a, what we call the toolkit, that is a guide. It's a written guide from 60 pages where we uh, try to explain how to do a project. Because uh, we think this is the first uh, step, no? Do a project with this methodology, and then you are going to see the difference, how your students are going to interact among them, how they are going to interact with you, how are they going to be open to the society. And then you are going to realize that they are able to do more things than you think. Uh, is what you share with us, no? All the educators that have done projects with this design for change methodology, tell us that they have discovered new things about their students because they have been able to listen to them. Then once you realize that this is possible, then you can go a little bit further. Uh, it's not going to be just in a project, but it's going to be uh, in something different. So once you are able to understand the, the methodology, for example, with this uh, toolkit that each country has uh, their own toolkit. But then we realize that some educators need something more. No? And is why we open the possibility to do some training. And in this case, the, the key element is that they need to experiment. Uh, design for change is not something theoretical. Uh, you need to experiment. So in our 12 hours training, what we do is that the eight first hours is about to do a challenge, to, uh, to the teachers that are in our training and at the beginning they tell no this is not possible because we don't know each other uh, we don't have enough time this is our all excuses and then we just go through the process uh, through the process with this field 
the first thing is we are allowing them to have conversation about what is really important about the subject we have put them, no? And then they realize that there is another way to listen to each other. It's not that my idea is our idea, and this is the magic of the process. Is why it's not by chance by design. It's not by chance by design. It's a one wonderful sentence from Kiran Birsetti. And because through this process, you are able to listen to all ideas, and then you really understand which is the problem you want to solve. Because so many times we solve the wrong problem. So once we identify, yes, this is the key element of this um, challenge that you put us, we are going to try to imagine. And then this is the path for the creativity. So uh, in this training, we allow them to uh, open all the creativity and we give them some tools in order to explore all the possibilities. And we give them some material because uh, we are used to think only with the, the head, but more important hands also think. So it's important that we open mind and we, we do in different ways because it's not possible to do something different when we are doing the same thing as ever. So once we know what we are going to do, then they need to plan in order to do because this is the key element. This project is not about to, to tell we have to do something, but it's to do. And then in the, during the, the training, they do a, a solution from this challenge. And this is a magical part because then they realize that it's possible. And then they realize that things are different from the they have uh, in their minds. But this is where you have to reflect. And then you learn. You learn, okay, how can we improve what we have done? But is the mindset. How can we do in every contest something different from what we are doing? And then is the share. The share is so important. Why? Because uh, first, we are inspiring other people because if someone can do it, it's not about just one someone who is magic. No, everyone can change the world. The problem is that sometimes we don't give us uh, the opportunity. So uh, once you do this this project, is is big or small, is it doesn't matter. We are, uh, we tell everybody to share with the world first to inspire others, and if we have done with students, we are telling them this is important and this is why uh, we are empowering them, and at the same time we are empowering the the teachers. Once you realize uh, this, then you see that education is yours education is from everyone it's not about politicians it's not about uh, only educators it's about everyone so if we really trust on this possibility that children are able to change the world we are going to listen to them in a different way so this way is so important i think that uh, everyone tries something different in order to interact with them because then you are going to be uh, much more possibilities than you, are, you, you used to do, no? Um, yes, and well, sorry for, I try to, to explain or, or to transmit you what other educators are telling us, which is the feeling when you use this uh, methodology. And it's more than a methodology, it's a mindset is something that allows you to interact in a very different way. And at the same time, it's so open that if you have other tools or the other methodologies, you can uh, mix with uh, this one. So it's not that if I do design for change, I cannot do other methodologies or other methods. It's, it's why it's, it's so, so amazing, no? Uh, what can this amazing community of 100 can do? Well, as I told you, uh, in Spain, we are telling that education is used. It's not something that uh, we have to wait that someone change something. No. In our own possibilities, we can change, we can evolve it, because we, we love this world. No, it's not just change, but change, sorry, but we are going to reflect and then to evolve. So, I think there is a lot of people, amazing people in this community that can not only try, but spread these amazing tools and connect uh, people, no? Something that we have um, seen is some educators feel that they are alone or they are isolated, but there are so many 
people doing amazing things. What we need is to interact and to connect one with uh, each other. And just to, to finalize, uh, I would like to um, invite you to see our webpage, is dfcspain.org, and all our social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, is DFC Spain. Uh, and just spread not only what, uh, what we are doing, but what everyone is doing. No? We are present in 65 countries. Thank you so much, Kiran, for beginning this amazing movement. And thank you so much for all the partners who are doing this possible. Because uh, when you do something, you need to feel that you are not alone. It's not only for educators, it's for everyone. And sometimes you have problems, but then you go to your network and you ask, hey, I need this. And when you, and when you have 20 or 30 answers, it's like, yeah, this is really something different is what we call the icon the the icon family no i think it's something very very special okay so thank you so much for this opportunity i hope you enjoy this time with these three different approaches from design for change kate from taiwan uh Zreen and jafar from jordan and miguel from uh, spain and well I ask you to be connected with 100 and next week you will have another amazing talk. Bye.